Dynamic range is the difference between a song's softest and loudest levels. The dynamic range of vinyl and cassettes was much less than live music. So various tools were invented to compress the dynamic range to fit within the playback media's limitations. Compressors basically act like an invisible hand that turns a fader down when the volume increases, then turns it back up when the volume decreases. Although CDs have a wide dynamic range, engineers still compress dynamic range to some degree with pop music. Be careful with dynamics. You may have heard about the loudness wars, where compression turns a waveform like this with dynamic range into something with no dynamic range at all. While super compressed sounds are impressive at first because they're loud, they lead to ear fatigue and destroy dynamics, a crucial element of giving music emotion. Studio One has several dynamics control tools. The most basic, although still very effective, and easiest to use is the limiter. This processor acts like the governor on an engine by clamping the output to a maximum level. Even if the input signal exceeds this level, the limiter will limit the output to the defined level. The ceiling control sets this maximum level. You typically set this a little below zero, as CD duplicators will sometimes reject CDs that go all the way to zero as they assume this indicates distortion. Setting threshold lower than the ceiling adds compression in the range between the two. A couple dB difference can add a little more apparent loudness without sounding too unnatural. Turning up the input leads to limiting when the input signal goes above the ceiling and the limiter has to bring the level down. The reduction meter shows how much the input has to be reduced to remain at the ceiling. For a natural sound, don't exceed 6 dB or so. Limiting sounds most natural if you don't clamp down too hard on the signal. Most engineers will use limiting simply to make sure occasional peaks don't go above the ceiling. However, if you really do want to compete in the loudness wars, then slam the input up high, but expect the sound to turn ugly. One way to find a good compromise setting is to rotate the input control. At some point, you'll find the sweet spot between too soft a sound and too loud a sound, where the signal quality still has dynamics and you don't hear distortion. It's a good idea to click on ISL, as sometimes levels between samples can be higher than the samples themselves, which can cause clipping. ISL prevents this. Another option is to click on Soft Clip. This actually clips the signal to prevent it from exceeding the maximum, but because it's a soft clip, it gives some of the sonic character associated with tubes and tape. Now let's check out the compressor, which is used more often for tracking than mastering. With mastering, it can give a more colored, vintage sound, but that's appropriate for some material. The biggest limitation of a standard compressor is that if, for example, there's a really loud kick drum, the volume for all frequencies will be turned down, because all a standard compressor cares about is level, not frequency. The Tricomp compressor addresses this limitation by splitting the signal into three bands, each with its own compressor. You can set the range of frequencies covered by each band and apply compression independently to them. So as one example, the kick drum would affect compression in the lowest band, but to a much lesser extent in the middle or high bands. There's also a master compression control that affects all bands, and a saturation control that adds a hint of distortion like vintage compressors often have.
For precision mastering, the multiband dynamics processor offers five individual bands of dynamics control. You can change the frequency range covered by each band, as well as mute, solo, and bypass bands so it's easy to hear how each band affects the sound. Not only can you dial in traditional compression curves that reduce gain with louder signals, but there's a second threshold control where you can return to a non-compressed curve for peaks. This gives the best of both worlds, a generally compressed sound, but one that retains peaks for dynamics. If the peaks cause clipping, you can follow the multiband dynamics with the limiter set to catch the occasional peak. It's even possible to do the reverse of compression and expand low-level sounds downward to reduce noise, almost like a noise gate. Multiband dynamics is exceptionally deep and can be intimidating. Fortunately, Presonus's sound designers have created useful presets that you can drop right into your music. Analyze the preset parameter settings and you'll learn a lot about how they affect the sound. Finally, remember that as with EQ, when using any kind of dynamics, the bypass button is an important reality test. Use it often to make sure you haven't gone too far astray from the original sound.